I want to talk about breath work now because that's been life changing for mm. me mm-hmm. in so many different ways for years. And I don't even know how this came about because it wasn't from any experience I had. And when I was young, I was fine. When I went into my 20s, I just became fearful of going on planes, like the claustrophobia. And I was like, just did not want to, like, I, I would never not go on the plane. It wasn't that bad. But I could feel my heart start beating and I really don't suffer from anxiety or panic attacks or anything like that, except for when I was going on a plane, I could feel the panic rising, right? I tried a hypnotist, I tried this and that, and and nothing really worked. And then someone said something to me one day, they said, why don't you try box breathing? And I was like, all right, that seems pretty easy. And they taught me how to do it. And literally it was the most life-changing thing. Like in an instant, I realized by controlling my breath, I didn't have to try and distract myself, think of other things, change my thoughts, get up, try and talk to someone, that my heart rate would just immediately become normal. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't start rapidly beating as it, it used to when I would get on planes. And I thought to myself, my God, the breath, this thing that we come into the earth with and we leave with is like the most powerful thing that we can have. And it doesn't cost us any money. And we take it for granted, right? And then I went to this Wim Hof retreat a couple of years ago and I started learning the Wim Hof technique of breathing, which you would know about a lot of people do, which is, you know, full on, especially if you're at a retreat like that and you're lying down, you do round after round after round. It's really intense. intense. And it kind of gets you to the ice bath later on. But I love the breath breath part. I thought that was amazing. I don't know if you can explain this to me. There's 30 strangers literally lying on their mats, most of them men. And we're doing this breathing, most as well for the first time. I'd never done it before. I don't know, maybe it was an hour or something like that. And then like I can hear the room start crying. I'm crying, having my own experience. My body is just like hardcore shaking. But you feel amazing. This is nothing negative is happening, happening, right? And then we all get out of it and we talk about our experience. I think every second person, they had some sort of visitation with a dead person or like it, there were these crazy experiences. How is that possible? Yeah. So there, there are a lot of, um, a lot of ways we could go here. I do want to point out one thing, uh, by the way, I, I, you know, hats off to women, family, I've know them. And, um, I think, uh, you know, he's certainly a pioneer in this whole thing of being, bringing breath work forward. The type of breathing that is Wim Hof breathing that you describe is what's called um, in my world, cyclic hyperventilation. Yes. So it's deliberate hyperventilation. Yeah. Another component of the Wim Hof method includes exposure to cold water. Um, it is really important as we march into this discussion to highlight that people should never ever combine cyclic hyperventilation or frankly breath work of any kind with getting into cold water. There have been some no. shallow water blackouts yeah, and yeah. some deaths because oh, yeah, people haven't been yes, doing it correctly. Yes. So uh, that's very yeah, important that's to highlight. Good. Two brain areas control different patterns of breathing, rhythmic and arrhythmic breathing. We know with certainty that when we inhale through the nose, through the mouth, with vigor or without vigor, that we are increasing our heart rate. When we exhale, whether or not we do it deliberately through the mouth, through the nose, it doesn't matter. We slow our heart rate down. This is because of something called respiratory sinus arrhythmia, which sounds bad. Everyone hears arrhythmia, it's bad, but it has to do with the fact that when we inhale, we create space in our chest cavity the heart gets a little bit larger and the volume of blood in the heart moves a little bit more slowly in that larger volume. And as a consequence, the nervous system goes, "Uh uh-oh, we need to speed the heart rate up a little bit, move it through. So inhale, boom, 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 heart rate goes up a little bit. Exhale, the opposite happens. The heart gets a little bit smaller, blood is moving more quickly through that smaller volume. And there's a signal from the parasympathetic arm of the autonomic nervous system, which is just fancy nerd speak. You can forget that to slow the heart rate down. What this means is if you learn nothing else about breath work from this conversation, when you inhale, you're speeding your heart rate up. And when you exhale, you're calming yourself down. This is important because normally when a child or we, or an adult Mm. is stressed, what do we say? Take a deep breath which is the exact opposite of what you want to do. You want to Mm. completely exhale all your air and then start controlling your breath rate to try and make it slower, emphasizing the duration and or the intensity of the exhales. So in real time, you can calm yourself down by extending your exhales. This 
best way to calm yourself down quickly is a big deep inhale through the nose and then another tiny inhale, sneak one in there. Even if you feel you're not getting any air in there, you're doing something very special to the lungs and we don't have time to get into it. So that when you exhale all your air, you're offloading carbon dioxide and you will calm yourself down almost immediately. You might have to do it a second time, but trust me, it works the first time, it works every time because that's what it does normally in sleep when carbon dioxide levels get too high in your bloodstream. So most breathwork practices, whether or not it's box breathing or Wim Hof breathing, which is cyclic hyperventilation breathing, take those two basic elements of inhales increase heart rate, exhales decrease heart rate, and use them in some combination. So you said box breathing. Box breathing is inhale, hold, exhale, hold, equal duration. So inhale for two, hold for two, exhale for two, hold for two, box breathing. Highly unusual pattern of breathing. Mm. When we do it, we are essentially controlling the exhales and the breath, the breath holds tend to shut down some of the neurons in those rhythmic breathing centers of the pre singer complex. And as a consequence, that hyperventilation that's normally associated with stress, we short circuit that. Mm. What do they have you do in Wim Hof breathing? Big inhale yeah. and let the air fall out of your mouth passively. So active, big, vigorous inhale. And then, and as you do that, you heat up immediately. Your heart rate increases. You're releasing adrenaline from the adrenal glands and from the, an area of the brain called the locus ceruleus in the brainstem. And why do people hallucinate, cry, et cetera? Because you're ramping up activation of the autonomic nervous system and you're doing it in a very non-specific way. So the body and the brain are in this very activated state, but you're kind of restricted to your mat. Maybe sometimes people shake or they feel like they want to move. And if you're whim, like, you know, I'll do my best whim impression. He'll be like, oh, no, no. it's a very <laughs> colorful character. Um, He's he'll do his podcast. horse pose, he'll grab his yeah. banjo, you know, just this thing. Okay. But... Anytime you see people doing Kundalini breathing, Wim Hof breathing, yes, the I've reason it Kundalini. looks to a yeah. typical person, uh, sorry, to a non-practitioner <laughs> as like, whoa, that looks crazy is because people are flooding themselves with adrenaline. Yeah. Now the macro on this, the big takeaway is that breathing is special in that gut motility, digestion of food, heart rate, all of those things are controlled by the so-called autonomic automatic nervous system. But breathing is too, but breathing is unique because it lies at the interface of conscious control and unconscious control. And so there's really nothing mystical about it. The, you know, people will argue, oh, when you do cyclic hyperventilation breathing, you're releasing DMT, this yeah, molecule that the, the, the people yeah. call it the God molecule. Um, I'll be honest, no, strong evidence for mm. that. Do I think it's impossible? No. I said no strong, let's say scientific peer-reviewed evidence for it. 